I want to welcome everyone today to today's industry pitch day for Agronext and Waternext. Um, it's with gratitude and respect that we acknowledge that the lands on which Foresight operates on are the traditional unceded territory of the Muskegon, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And I myself acknowledge that I live and work and play on the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people in Ottawa. Uh, my name is Benita Matthew. I'm the program manager of Agronext and Waternext. So I'm very glad to have you all here today to hear. Uh, from our cohort of Waternext and Agronext Ventures uh, for fall 2023 to pitch their products and solutions. A quick overview of the agenda. We're going to do a quick uh, couple of uh, remarks and an overview of Foresight, Waternext and Agronext as a whole. And then I'll hand it over to our uh, wonderful funding partners, Farm Credit Canada and Xylem for Agronext and Waternext respectively. Before we head over to our pitches, uh, within some breakout rooms for some extended pitches and a Q&A opportunity with our companies on the line today. And then we'll have some closing remarks uh, closer to the hour mark before we end the session. So a quick overview for those who are new to Foresight. Foresight is Canada's clean tech ecosystem accelerator. Uh, our audacious goal is that Canada be the first, um, oh, sorry. Uh, the first uh, G7 country to reach net zero by accelerating clean tech innovation and driving the adoption of climate uh, solutions. Since its inception, we have supported over a thousand ventures. I am having some trouble with my... There we go. Um... There we go. Since its inception, we've supported over a thousand ventures and collaborated with over 2,000 stakeholders, rights holders, and partners, both uh, domestically and internationally. And how do we do this? We do this through a couple of different avenues. Acceleration programming, which fits all stages of a venture from kickstart to launch and deliver to pilot to grow for C-suite capabilities. We have industry investor matchmaking through select programming and conference events that we offer in ventures the opportunity to connect with investors and industry players online and on the ground. We have innovation partnerships uh, with piloting opportunities and access to a couple of different innovation libraries that we offer through Foresight and through our next sector specific streams, as well as our innovation sandboxes. We have stakeholder engagement, which uh, helps with coordinating and collaborating with other stakeholders in uh, the various next spaces and sectors. Uh, and of course, identifying opportunities to showcase Canadian clean tech through our various industry pitch and demo days. I want to chat a little bit about Agronext now, uh, which is our ag tech uh, focused sector initiative. Uh, Agronext was established by Foresight to drive the growth and scaling of Canadian clean tech ventures that address and the environmental and competitive pain points of our agri-food industry. We support ventures with acceleration programming, Agronext cohort programming, and getting connected to industry players in the ag tech space, as well as the agriculture industry more broadly. We are funded uh, in part through Farm Credit Canada, which is one of our uh, strongest partners with Agronext at this time. Over to Waternext, which is an initiative of Foresight, which is focused on being Canada's largest water technology network. We envision Canada as the best place in the world to develop and commercialize innovative water technologies uh, to serve the world's most pressing water challenges. And we do this through a couple of different things, very similar to most of Foresight, uh, through our acceleration programming, our industry and investor matchmaking, innovation partnerships, stakeholder engagement, as well as identifying opportunities to showcase Canadian water tech. Uh, and our uh, partnership uh, right now is through our funding partner, Xylem uh, Innovation Labs, uh, along with our network partners that you can see on your screen right now. I'd like to hand it over to uh, our uh, contact at Farm Credit Canada to have a few uh, opening remarks. Over to you, Darren. Thanks, Benita. Uh, my name is Darren Sauer. I'm uh, part of the Farm Credit Canada Venture Capital Team, and it's a real pleasure to be here today. I want to welcome all of you to this event. Um, for those of you who don't know, Farm Credit Canada is a federal crown corporation that's focused on supporting Canadian agriculture. And the vast majority of what we do is um, lend money to people involved in the agriculture business. Uh, but for the last 20 years or so, we have also had a venture capital program. As part of that program, we have invested in 17 different 
venture capital and private equity funds, and we've provided uh, sponsorship uh, funding to a number of different accelerator groups, and very excited to support Agronext and Foresight, and really, uh, really looking forward to seeing the, the pitches today, and I just wish all of you a fantastic event. Thanks, Benita. Thanks so much, Darren. Uh, over to uh, Waternext funding partner, Xylem Innovation. Uh, welcome, Bree. Thanks so much, Benita. Um, good morning or good afternoon. I am Bree Nakamura. I am a innovation analyst here on Xylem Innovation Labs. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Xylem, Xylem is a large global water tech company. We actually operate in over 350 country, countries with around 22,000 employees, covering the entire water life cycle, everything from transporting, treating, and sensing water quality for our customers worldwide. Um, Xylem Innovation Labs is Xylem's current iteration of our corporate innovation team, really focusing on how we can look at strategic partnerships as a way to bring new technologies and innovation into our business units and our portfolio. Uh, we're really excited to be supporting the Water Next Accelerator again this year um, and really look forward to hearing about some of the companies, both in the Water Next and the Agronext program. We really utilize partnerships like ours with Foresight Canada and with Water Next as a way to kind of help with our scouting funnel. We're a pretty small team, but we want to know what's happening in the industry. And by partnering with groups like Foresight Canada, it really gives us an eye opening into both what's happening in Canada, but what's happening outside of water. And it's something that we really look for in terms of helping to scout for some of our programming as well, including our commercial accelerator program. So really excited to learn about more companies today and happy to chat about anybody with Xyl about Xylem in the future. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Bree. Uh, a little bit about the format again for today. Uh, each company will get the chance to uh, present a short pitch between uh, one to two minutes to the whole audience. Um, but considering uh, perhaps the smaller attendance today, we might just keep everyone in the breakout rooms to uh, do their first 60 second pitch. Uh, and then open it out for uh, longer extended pitches as well as Q&A uh, opportunities for each company. Uh, Bonita, uh, I think you meant the main room, right? Oh, sorry, in the main room. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Nisha. Uh, and then the pitching order is as such. Uh, we have a wonderful list of Agronext and Waternext ventures who will, that we'll be talking to you today about their products and solutions. Uh, and up first, we have Lawless Solutions. And I want to come there. Oh, hi, Beth. Perfect. Hi there. My name is Beth Lawless. I'm the CEO of Lawless Environmental Solutions, and our technology is going to change the world. Uh, we are a seed stage clean tech company that has solved a significant problem in sustainable, accessible food production. Our patent pending hydroponics technology generates its own power, eliminating the single biggest expense faced by hydroponics growers. Uh, if you could change the slide, that would be great. Uh, so how do we do this? Uh, we incorporate a hydroelectric generator into the system itself. Current solutions involve uh, site-wide modifications like microgrids or solar panels or locating the farms uh, in places where there is already accessible and clean and inexpensive energy, uh, which in Canada is basically limited to Quebec. Our solution al allows for greater flexibility in the system, uh, as well as a lower cost for operators uh, uh, in the vertical farm and hydroponics industry. We use the water that is already used for crop irrigation to generate the power that the system needs. Uh, and as companies in this industry right now are facing uh, the rising energy costs, in some cases it amounts for almost half of their uh, expenses. Uh, we're looking to significantly reduce those costs and uh, increase the viability of this industry. Uh, we're really excited to talk to you more about sort of what we've been working on and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but that is basically uh, the gist. Thanks so much, Beth. Over to One Cup AI. Good morning. My name is Jeffrey, and I'm the CTO of One Cup AI. We do computer vision for animal care. Our technology, Betsy, is the eyes of the rancher when the rancher is away. Next slide, please. 
This is how Betsy sees. Betsy is a very sophisticated AI made of 24 computer vision models linked together in a giant pipeline. What you see in front of you is how Betsy is actually using face ID technology, the same technology that exists on your phone to actually use and identify all the animals that she sees from a camera. In doing so, she then tracks everything that animal does from breeding, calving, lameness, and even scoring phenotypes. And she does this today 10 million times a day. We are backed by several VCs, three different VCs, and our most important partner is the United Farmers Association out of Alberta, and also our biggest investor. One Cup recently graduated from the Google's Accelerator, and we are proud to announce that we recently were awarded Company of the Year, or I should say Business of the Year, from Deloitte at the Canadian Western Agribution Conference um, last month. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. We also signed a $1.7 million contract. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Over to Nanomix. I'm just confirming okay. if. Okay. Hello. Perfect. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I am Alexei Pavlichenko. I am the director of the company of Nanomix Group. Uh, our journey began in Ukraine in 2011, pioneering the development and production of Nanomix fertilizers, leveraging our patented cavitation technology and formulation. Over the past decade, we have successfully supplied companies in 25 countries, demonstrating remarkable results Unfortunately, our facilities faced adversity during the Russian occupation. Now we are poised to, uh, to uh, uh, revolutionize ferment practice in North America. Our non-fertilizers offer uh, un un unprecedented, unprecedented benefits from significantly increasing yields and preserving soil health to boosting nutritional value values and delivering substantial cost savings for farmers. Moreover, the greatly contribute to emissions reduction, algenic with sustainable goals. We are seeking partners and collaborators for share and vision of more sustainable and produ productive agricultural future. Together, let's redefine farming. Thank you. Thank you. Over to the Vectaberry team. Hi, everyone. Um, looks like my presentation changed because <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Uh, so um, Belgium based. So uh, good late afternoon uh, to you all. So uh, co-founder of Vertiberry. Uh, so we're an engineering company active in multi-layer growing systems um, dedicated 100% um, to strawberries and uh, enabling therefore to growing uh, year-round production, um, high quality, high yields, uh, and so long. Uh, next slide, please. Um, our mission and vision that we, that we created is really creating a resilient and healthy food system, uh, especially considering a growing population uh, while improving biodiversity. Uh, I think, uh, and we believe that those elements can uh, go hand in hand and especially if you do so, uh, not in a one-man show, uh, but if you combine that with all different stakeholders uh, using state-of-the-art technology, we believe uh, that my presentation... <laughs> okay, sorry, that just completely went elsewhere. Apologies for the technical issue. No, no, no problem. And uh, so let's say uh, you're probably wondering, well, what the Belgian guy is, is doing in this call is, well, happy to announce that um, we recently signed um, a massive scale a deal uh, in Quebec. So uh, establishing a venture in Quebec uh, that will enable uh, the growth of uh, 30 tons of strawberries per week. Uh, creating jobs for uh, close to 100 uh, persons uh, in Quebec, of course, considering all types um, of automation in um, that uh, facility. It's, a, it's an next slide, Bonita. Um, 
and uh, will generate a turnover of 21 uh, million Canadian dollars uh, in that facility with an investment budget of close to uh, 50 million uh, dollars. Uh, so happy to discuss about uh, that Canadian project with uh, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to Rain Grid. Hello. Um, so Rain Grid captures the value of rain with intelligent rain retention and reuse, or IR3 systems. Um, so Rain Grid's IR3 enhances data-driven decision making, improves flood and drought resilience in cities, and applies next generation technologies for rainfall retention and reuse on every property. The IR3 prop tech is a democratized approach to building climate resilient communities. The Internet of Things um, IR3 systems virtually eliminate stormwater runoff and regenerate watersheds. The precipitation forecast algorithm and IoT sensors electrically um, actuated uh, drainage is combined with property-based infiltration galleries can augment nature-based solutions and retain and recharge groundwater on site. The real-time property-level microclimate data captured improves decision-making and informs flood forecasting, early warning systems, disaster risk response. The ecosystem outcomes are verified and can be monetized. So what that means is the data generated empowers ecosystem credits such as stormwater offsets, GFG, as well as ecosystem restoration credits. Our model is that RainGrid provides end-to-end -end stormwater management solutions for cities, developers, property management companies, and corporate campuses, as well as uh, agricultural um, sites. The team designs, installs, and maintains digitized drain management systems that can improve records, monitoring, and maintenance. And the distributed smart infrastructure reduces the need for pipe system upgrades and delays overland infrastructure repairs caused by flooding. So that's the value add for cities. Essentially, we're building a circular economy of rain. And this model has been recognized at COP most recently with an award by the Global Forum for Human Settlements as a global model of green technology. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Over to Rogue Seven. Good morning. My name is Quinn from uh, Rogue Seven. Uh, could you please advance to uh, our next slide? So Rogue 7 uh, has built uh, the Water Intuition platform. Um, this platform has been built to optimize and assist with leak detection for our, uh, municipal water distribution systems. I'm happy to say that we've completed our first project in the UK for water pump optimization, our first product, and we're, we're delivering better than 15% uh, energy cost reductions. Uh, we've also got a range of other products, including an acoustic logger deployment optimization product, which can uh, generate uh, optimal maps for lift and shift deployment of acoustic loggers. We have also have a leak detection product, uh, which does a great job of uh, doing anomaly detection, which can help you to zero in on where there may be leaks or problems with your acoustic loggers. And then we also have a customer side leakage product where we can take data from your smart meters and we can identify unusual uh, household consumption. Uh, I'd love to talk to you in more detail about uh, any of these products in the breakout uh, session. Thank you. Thank you. Over to Drop Solutions. Ready to roll. Um, cool. Uh, I, I get, do the two slides make it in, Benita? Sorry. Uh, no, it was not loading either, but feel free to just chat oh. and then we'll have the, the more extended pitches where you can okay. share your slide deck after. Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. So I'm Dylan, I'm with Drop Solutions. We designed a plant management app for water treatment uh, in, which starting in uh, rural Saskatchewan was our starting place and we're growing quite rapidly. Basically, we built a collaborative data management app for all of the places that did not have that capability. We designed it on a, on a, to, as a progressive web app so that it could be used on any, any platform whatsoever. And we centered it around the idea of supply tracking and procurement, asset uh, management, asset management and uh, management of maintenance and conforming to uh, like, um, regulatory requirements for maintenance on systems. Uh, we, uh, we created an action journaling and um, 
uh, service request system right inside the app as well that connects connects the facilities with the correct correct things they need and helps them track all the miscellaneous information that might be happening. Um, and then we started working on report and or sorry regulatory report generation for all of the uh, the, the numerous reports that they have to submit to the uh, like the water security agency regulation uh, bodies in our particular case, it is the water security agency in Saskatchewan, but we're uh, developing it to copy paste to the other to the other regulatory bodies in each one of the provinces and and the federal uh, federal ones for governing the the First Nation as well. Um, and the biggest uh, key to drops is that we figured out how to make the software platform itself free by leveraging a brokerage type setup where we are essentially brokering all the services and supplies that need to go to these plants and optimizing the cost of that so that it does not cost the user more and they're incentivized to actually use the software to uh, save them save them time and uh, keep their systems running. That's uh, that's the gist. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. And yeah. last but not least, uh, over to Amb AI. Hi there. Uh, I am Samer with uh, Amb AI, and I'd like to start with a little bit of a story. A couple of years ago, a uh, the residents of an Ontario city woke up to geysers of poop flooding their streets. Um, which is definitely a scene that nobody would like to see. That's why municipalities always uh, strive to routinely inspect their uh, sewer lines. Uh, unfortunately, this process is becoming more cumbersome as due to budget constraints and the large amount of uh, uh, manual work involved. That is why we developed uh, Sewer Intel. And sorry, I think the first video in the slide is not showing, so it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, that's why we developed Sewer Intel, a software that combines the power of machine learning with human intuition to automate a large sum of sewer inspection tasks from analyzing videos to condition assessment to treatment selection and to deterioration tracking and automatic monitoring. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Okay. Sewer Intel, uh, using Sewer Intel can save up to 90% on time and cost uh, while maintaining a uh, consistent accuracy that is um, on average uh, higher than what people uh, can achieve. Um, we are working with several municipalities in BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Ontario, and we are looking to um, extend our collaboration. Thank you very much, and thanks for uh, foresight or for organizing this event. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, the problem that we are trying to solve with our technology uh, is primarily surrounding um, uh, vertical farms and hydroponic farms at an industrial scale. These farms were sold as being, you know, this utopian solution to food insecurity and food sovereignty, especially in northern regions like Canada. Canada imports uh, approximately 90% of its leafy greens and more than 50% of its fruits and vegetables. And as a result, we're very vulnerable uh, to disruptions both at the production site as well as through these long, complicated supply chains that really feed us. Uh, so vertical farms were supposed to come in and, you know, save the day and make it so that we could have uh, leafy greens all year round that were local and affordable. Uh, the problem is that the energy costs associated with uh, the uh, vertical farms has gotten so high that the farm viability is being impacted. Uh, this is making investors nervous and we're seeing pretty big high profile failures across the industry. Right now, the solution that people are using is they are uh, either putting it in places where energy is cheap. Uh, a lot of them really prioritize the clean energy, but that uh, limits the availability further. They don't want these farms run off coal. Uh, and the other option that we're seeing is solar panels or wind turbines or microgrids at the site. Uh, 
Uh, but this impacts as well the flexibility of where these farms can be located because you have to place them where you have uh, ample renewable technology. Uh, so who do we think we are to be able to solve this problem effectively? We are interdisciplinary professionals and uh, we're taking sort of a different approach and a more micro approach uh, to the problem. Uh, our solution integrates the hydro, a hydroelectric generator into the system. This means you can put it anywhere, office buildings that are not being used, church basements, community centers, uh, the far north, and it doesn't matter what infrastructure is in place or what the energy sources are available to you. Uh, you can uh, run these uh, systems sustainably and with a much lower expense. Why did we decide to do this? Well, flexibility. We also are uh, very focused on our uh, impact in terms of carbon and also on the planet. We see right now rising food prices and we wanted to do something about it. Uh, so this is what the system looks like. It has a reservoir up at the top that then moves to a battery or that moves down through a pipe to the hydroelectric generator that charges the battery. Uh, and runs the lights. Apologize, this uh, diagram is a little bit uh, challenging to see. Uh, it then filters out of the diffusion outlet and proceeds to irrigate the plants as normal. As a result of the innovation that we're, we're doing here that is patent pending, we don't have direct comp uh, competitors in the industry. We are sort of in the intersection between these microgrid and solar panel producers and typical traditional hydroelectric equipment producers. Uh, we are the disruption in this industry, and we're really excited to sort of change things up, but we do not at this point have any direct competition. If the vertical farm industry can overcome this energy cost barrier, it is expected to grow uh, exponentially over the next several years. You know, we're seeing a lot of disruptions due to climate change, uh, due to COVID and that sort of thing that is impacting uh, food availability, and we're seeing a lot of shortages as a result. And uh, so it is projected to grow uh, quite a bit. Right now, however, there, we're seeing, we're hearing from industry partners approximately 44% of their expenses are energy costs, uh, which is their single largest expense. Uh, so who are we? Uh, we are an ethical and sustainable minded business. It is very important to us that we take care of the three P's, you know, people, profit and planet. As a result, uh, we are looking to have our supply chain be as sustainable and ethical as possible. Uh, and so we're not sort of looking to ship this product off to the cheapest manufacturer in the third world and have this made. Uh, we really do want to take care of our people as well as our carbon input right from the very beginning. Our team is currently two people. I'm a horticulturalist and I have training in um, program development and experience in program development as well as in the finance and transportation industries. Uh, my partner is a, an, an engineer, an electrical engineer. He's taking care of the technology side of things, and I'm taking care of the plants at this point. We're running on a lean startup model, and we do anticipate having relatively large uh, gains fairly quickly. We do have letters of intent signed uh, from one company, and we are uh, in talks with several others. And we are looking to have... Uh, this up and running and profitable by the end of next year and finish our testing. Like I said, we are in seed stage and the prototype is under construction. At this point, we are looking to raise a million dollars. Of that, we're looking for 250,000 from private equity sources uh, and the remainder will come from non-dilutive sources. Uh, we're looking at uh, several different ones uh, that will, including IRAP and ACT. Uh, that will make up the remainder of the funding. This is some more information about our uh, system. Like I said, we're expected to begin testing next year and be in pre-commercial by the end of next year at this point. Obviously, these timelines are subject to change, uh, but that's where we're at. Uh, so, yeah, so in summary, we're really looking forward to the opportunity of some investors who are on board in terms of being like-minded, uh, in terms of being sustainable and equitable. Uh, and to really move forward from there.
Thanks so much, Beth. What we want to talk about is issues that occur on in animal care and applies not only to livestock, but also to pets, family animals as well. The issue that we're addressing fundamentally is that there's not enough humans to look after the, all the animals that exist. There's more animals under human care than there are humans alive today. Unfortunately, with not enough humans to look after them, there's a lot of fatalities and lack of care that's occurring with animals. We can address that problem today. The cost of not having enough humans is roughly 4 million fatalities in the U.S. right now. Cost in the industry, well north of 4 billion. Our solution is quite simple. You use artificial intelligence, computer vision specifically, to address the lack of humans, to replace both the humans and the hardware that is, exists on the animal with effectively software-based AI-powered solutions. And we call our AI Betsy, or your AI Ranch Hand. Betsy, as you know, sees a lot like this, and she sees a series of boxes and dots and classifies everything animals do. And in doing so, she's actually driven by an AI pipeline that looks a lot like what you see in front of you. She's 25 vision models integrated together to classify everything from nutrition to water intake to phenotype classifications to events occurring around calving or even breeding of animals and much, much more. The point is, is an AI can do what a human does, but does it 24 seven, and in our case, 10 million times a day. Now, the benefit of this, the immediate benefits are in the case of optimizing breeding detection. When is an animal ready to be bred? Or determining when an animal is sick. If you can catch an animal that is sick sooner, you can treat it with less expensive drugs and get a better outcome. And another very pain point in the industry is calving. During calving, it, ranches are up <clears throat> many hours of the night, checking on their, their calves or at, with their heifers and cows two to three times a night to see if there's a calving event occurring and if they need intervention. By the way, the fatality rate during calving is around 7%, so being there is quite important. Our AI Betsy can be there when they are not and notify them when an event is important. The way that we do that is we send out alerts. When the AI sees something that's important, she sends out a very detailed description of what's going on to identify when human intervention is required. In this case here, she helped identify when a calf was being born, and the result is next morning, we have a beautiful, brown, young, and healthy calf. Now, our technology looks like this in front of the customer for the customer. In doing so, we don't just show graphs and, and, and boxes. We actually let the user interact with the AI as the AI sees things. This is a technology that we spent um, almost two years building. And what it allows the user to do is actually interact with the AI as the AI understands what's happening in the world around it. And in doing so, visualize what Betsy sees. This allows customers to actually understand why the AI says what she says. Today, we're um, spread across Western Canada. We have um, nearly 200 locations up and running with our technology. And we've accumulated over 500,000 hours of video. The way it works is a rancher puts the, the, our cameras on site with Wi-Fi gear. The AI learns the ID of the animals, looking at the draw pegs and building the face ID algorithms. And in doing so, a rancher pays roughly $40 per month per camera. The market for this is enormous. We think the, the TAM on a global scale is at least 20 billion, as there are over a billion animals for most major species alive. And we do a lot more than just um, feed livestock. We do everything from um, alpacas to zebras, including cats and dogs, as you can see here. Our revenue forecast um, is about 1.25 million next year, expected to grow to 3 million the year afterwards. We've already got a good part of this um, already booked. And we recently signed a contract to do drug trials in animals, drug trials to accelerate drug trials north one, worth 1.7 million. We are um, targeting various aspects of the market using channel partners to take out various segments. And here we are partnering with various procurement associations, the UFA, and of course, drug development companies. Last but not least, one of the things that makes us unique is that we have a huge synthetic engine that generates animal data at scale. So we have a way of creating trained data that populates our AI, AI with new skills very quickly. In the next 30, 60 days alone, we will produce over 10 million new synthetic images to drive AI training. This is our work on German Shepherds. And last but not least, um, the reason this is the right time and the right place for this technology is SpaceX and Starlink. As Starlink launches 50 satellites every several every, every few days, that's bringing broadband internet to the other half of the world, specifically the rural markets. 
our technology is the killer app for SpaceX and Starlink. And in doing so, we are the eyes of the rancher when the rancher is away, taking care of millions of animals and saving millions of animals' lives. Thank you very much. Oh, and we've also filed, by the way, three patents, and we have um, two more about to be submitted. Thank you. Today, I present to you attention a revolutionary and innovative complex chelated micronutrient fertilizers, which will become a real breakthroughs in agriculture. Our company, Namix, already produces uh, complex chelated microfertilizers and has a successful experience of their use on various crops, various soils, and in various climatic conditions. Citing global problems today, uh, agro-industrial companies and farms face uh, the detrimental global challenges. High growing costs, fuel, labor, fertilizers, equipment, soil depletion, droughts, unstable climate conditions, lack of trace elements in the soil, soil salinization, various plant diseases, lower yield, low nutritional value of the crop, Problems that lead uh, to a huge decrease in production and income. Problems that lead uh, to, to the increased final cost. Additional global question uh, of how to, to reduce the detrimental effect of soil depletion and harmful emissions into the atmosphere during the production and use of basic NPK fertilizers, which destroy the ozone layer of our planet. What is Nanomix? Uh, our company has been engaged uh, in the research and development of environmentally friendly complex chelated fertilizers for the last 14 years. We have created a new, unique formula of complex chelated fertilizers, as well as developed and patented an environmentally friendly love energy production method using a cavitation reactor. And the use of our formula accelerates uh, the process of uh, maturation of plants, restores soil fertility, increases yield by up to 30%, makes plants resistant to various de desires and also makes them resistant to drought, frost, and excise moisture. A dramatic increase in the nutritional properties of all the crops uh, the first legumes developed a higher pro protein con content, cereals increase their gluten content, uh, oil content increase in oil seeds, sugar content increases in sugar beet, uh, in fruits and berries the co content of useful trace elements increases. Worldwide document test results. Since uh, 2010 we have carried our test uh, of 1000 uh, on thousands of hectares of land in various countries under various climate conditions. Nanomix for the uh, for, for the period of two years on the 6,000 hectares of land recording monthly changes in the weather and growth and comparing Nanomix results to the regular fertilizer usage based on our ex experience and the independent test results. We can say with confidence that Nanomix is the solution to the global biggest problem, how to feed the world. Looking at the report, reported statistical numbers and thinking about uh, what our company can do the future of basic agriculture without spending millions of dollars and years for R&D and government approvals, providing a phenomenal increase in profit margin margins for the farmers. Thank you. Well, yes. um, hi again, um, everyone. So um, I'm Alex, the co-founder of uh, Vertiberry. We're a Belgian engineering company active in uh, the development of multi-layer growing solutions um, dedicated for strawberries. Um, what we believe in is that, uh, well, we have to create a resilient and um, healthy food system uh, to, on the one hand, uh, help feeding the growing world population and not the end um, improve or even restore um, biodiversity. Um, let's say our strawberries is um, our first product um, that we focus on uh, developing the tech to enable let's say other crops uh, to follow in the in the near future. 
we do that uh, not uh, on ourselves. Uh, we do that with a bunch of partners going from local partners uh, in the respective areas that we uh, deploy in. Uh, and of course, uh, with worldwide partners uh, to help us with uh, some specific uh, tasks. And uh, why do we do that is because we really believe in long lasting um, relationships because uh, they will generate um, the best return uh, on those foundations that we built with those guys. Um, the Belgian guys speaking, let's say, uh, of Canada. So we've signed a uh, large scale vertical farm uh, in the Quebec uh, province. Um, we'll start construction, uh, let's say, end of, of this next uh, summer. Uh, with the first harvest in uh, Q3 uh, 2025, and we will grow up to uh, 1,800 tons um, of strawberries per year. Um, of course, uh, the facility will need some, some labor there, uh, so we'll have close to 10 uh, white collars in the company uh, and 90 blue collars, uh, generating a revenue of 21 uh, million dollars uh, with an investment of 51 um, we're at the moment uh, close to uh, getting the term sheets um, of the different uh, partners uh, financial partners that uh, we in, we that will be involved so happy to to reach out to uh, potential investors that might be interested in let's say a stable uh, return stable supply knowing that 100% um, of the strawberries that will be produced in that facility are already sold uh, with uh, commercial agreements. So just to give you an indication, uh, we'll sell up to 30 tons of uh, strawberries into both um, the Canadian, but also into the Northeastern uh, American uh, market. So really happy to discuss. Uh, let's say it's um, a first large scale project on the North American soil. So really also um, reaching out to people that say, well, we uh, have or we could potentially uh, generate some offtake uh, because it's the, the first step that we always look for when, when deploying. Uh, and uh, yeah, happy to continue discussion um, during this call or uh, during uh, other calls to be planned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Over to Raingrid. Thank you. Um, hello again. So Raingrid captures the value of rain with intelligent rain retention and reuse systems. We are at the seed stage, um, even though, as you see, when I show you our trajectory, there's a bit of a history there. So essentially what we're doing is building the, oh, uh, sorry, go back one sec. Um, the circular economy of rain with distributed property-based systems for capturing that full value, um, both in terms of the data, but also ensuring that the water can be recharged on site. Um, our aim is to get the rain that hits the roof and create net zero stormwater within cities. Next. Uh, so we are facing a climate crisis, both of too much and too little rain, and the conventional model of dealing with stormwater isn't working. Um, it's costly, and it's also leading to a greater need for repair of overland infrastructure, as well as piped infrastructure, um, and can lead to combined sewer overflows. Uh, so we're really looking at how do we design differently. Next. Some of the other SDG themes that our approach uh, tackles um, is to be more inclusive with our infrastructure and governance, um, to address the flood and drought vulnerability, environmental impacts from the combined sewer overflows that then impact uh, biodiversity loss and wildlife. Next. So essentially our main outcomes are that we maximize rain retention at the property level then with a combination of our precipitation forecast algorithm, the Internet of Things or the IoT sensors um, that include electrically actuated drainage um, combined with property-based infiltration galleries, um, we're looking to digitize nature-based solutions and, and build really climate resilient communities um, through those lot level approaches. And by doing all of that, we're looking to introduce the circular economy of rain. And with that, ecosystem credits, so we can monitor 
what the environmental outcomes are and monetize those to finance the project. Next. So essentially our solution is the Intelligent Rain Retention and Reuse System, IR3. Um, components of it are the actual hardware um, and the sensors. Then there's also the data and disaster risk response um, that is of use to municipalities, insurers, uh, and governments. So that data would be sold. Um, we are looking to be an end-to-end -end solution, um, both selling the system, but then also operating and maintaining it and giving access to the real-time analytics because the data is captured and recorded every six seconds. And then the wealth of that data that is generated again, goes into creating the ecosystem credits. And so we are in some preliminary conversations about developing an LOI in Maryland um, with a property management company there. Next. To give you a sense for who we sell to in our customer segments, we're a full service provider to both the residential and commercial property owners and property managers. When it comes to water utilities and municipalities, we sell the net zero stormwater benefits, um, as well as showing that infrastructure at the municipal level can be extended by investing in this cheaper option. And then for provincial, federal governments and insurers, there's that data-driven decision-making piece um, with a lot level data that's useful for flood forecasting and emergency response. Next. Um, so this goes a little bit more into the value uh, that we offer those different groups, um, but I'll go next because mindful of the time that we have and everyone else needs to go. Um, so the global market opportunity for drainage infrastructure is about one trillion, and we're looking to disrupt that, um, both in terms of the flood barrier market, um, as well as the global water recycle market. When we initially started, uh, there weren't very many competitors, and now there are, showing that this approach of distributed water management is gaining traction. Um, the awards that we've received on the global stage, if you go next, um, also speak to this. So to give, us, uh, give you a little bit of the history, the idea was launched in 2012. Um, our minimum viable product was developed in 2015. Um, I was briefly at the company then, left to do some policy work, and then came back. Um, in the meantime, there was a IWRA case study. Um, there was also an installation that was done in Collingwood with um, a renewed version of the product. In 2023, we received 250K Canadian um, during the World Economic Forum uplink uh, innovation, um, and that comes with HCL support, which is a large uh, conglomerate. And then just recently at COP, we were awarded the global model of green technology. So we're noticing a shift in the market and taste and openness to this type of distributed approach to managing the rain. Next. Um, so mentioning the case studies, Collingwood being one, as well as Glenway um, in terms of property management. And there, there's a lot of traction because where you have municipalities that have stormwater levies, it automatically creates the market for the stormwater credits and a means by which the installation can be offset. Um, next. So what we're looking for is investment. Um, we're raising a seed round of two million. This would go towards hiring a CTO as well as scaling up our product um, and operations. Um, we're also looking for partners um, for our growth, um, new advisors, as well as recruiting candidates for the Global Circular Rain Challenge. We are speaking to people in Malaysia and in India and exploring global markets as well. Um, Essentially, what the Global Circular Rain Challenge is, is looking at cities that want to really show that they're leading the way when it comes to climate resilience and adaptation, um, and with them to jointly apply to do and install. Next. Uh, this is our team, as well as our fantastic group of advisors who come with a wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to ecosystem credit markets. Next. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch, uh, that's where you can go. Thanks for considering. Thank you, Natalia. Over to the Rogue 17. Hi, um, I just wanna share my screen here. If you can just give me a second.
So uh, Rogue Seven, as I mentioned, we've built Water Intuition, uh, which is a which is a machine learning platform that uh, collects data from SCADA, uh, SCADA systems that operate water distribution networks, as well as a range of other data directly from devices, so that we can uh, deliver a range of products that can help uh, in mitigating a big challenge that it's out there. Um, as everybody knows, about 25 percent of water is lost from source to customer uh, across the planet in your your typical uh, water distribution network. We're building a range of products that can comprehensively mitigate that. Uh, we've got a pump optimization product that moves more water, optimizes the network, and also reduces the energy per uh, barrel of water that's moving through the system. Secondly, we have a range of leak detection products that we're building that work with uh, acoustic loggers or smart meters. But more importantly though, uh, for us to build these products, we've had to focus on certain markets. And uh, the markets that we've been uh, pursuing are markets where there's water scarcity that exists, as well as a high level of regulation. And this has brought us actually to the United Kingdom. Uh, they have a national water regulator uh, in place. Uh, the national water uh, regulator has put in uh, financial penalties if utilities do not reduce water leakage. And I'm happy to say that we're working with a number of water utilities within the UK and uh, on leakage as well as on pump optimization. We've recently completed our first project in the UK uh, with uh, Anglian Water. Uh, this was on the uh, water pump optimization side. The big takeaway was that we can reduce uh, energy consumption and cost uh, in a greater than 15% realm. Uh, I've seen in some of the simulations as high as 29%. Uh, this is a significant saving, uh, but as well, we can also optimize for just general operation of the network, as well as for greenhouse gases and a few other things if you're looking for that. This is all done in real time. Uh, the way the product works is, is that we take uh, in demand forecast from our partner simulator uh, for 24 hours ahead. Uh, we uh, put in constraints in terms of uh, water levels in your reservoirs or your tanks, as well as pump, uh, pump controls. And then we generate a one day ahead uh, schedule that an operator would use to optimally operate uh, that pump uh, station. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I'd love to uh, talk to you offline. We have white papers and other documents that we're generating, and we're looking for partners in Canada to deploy this technology, i.e. Uh, water utilities. Uh, in terms of our other products, uh, we have a logger deployment optimization tool. So uh, in the case of lift and shift, where you're moving acoustic loggers around to various areas where you uh, need to do more analytical work, uh, we're finding that probably the best uptake for this will be uh, water service companies that are being contracted to come into water utilities and do periodic uh, acoustic logger activity for leak detection. So we're also looking to partner with engineering or water service companies that are looking to uh, deploy this product. And then finally, on the, uh, on the leak detection side, as I mentioned before, uh, we've been building an acoustic logger product, uh, I mean, pardon me, a uh, lo logger leak detection product where we take data from acoustic loggers. We've been working with Helma and Guterman loggers at this point in time. Uh, we are doing event analysis where we can identify a range of strange events, which predominantly lead to leaks. Secondly, on the leak detection front, we also are being able to take data from smart meters and we can identify where there's unusual consumption in a household, uh, usually a running toilet or some sort of uh, leak somewhere. And we've been able to build this data off a public data set provided by uh, the water utility in Victoria, Canada. Uh, so if anybody is looking to talk further, uh, we're all about partnerships. We have a great partnership with the hydraulic analysis group based out of the UK. They've been our partner in accessing that market. We'd love to get partners here in Canada, as well as the United States, to grow our uh, footprint. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, in just keeping with time, we still want to let uh, two more companies pitch. If you can stay on the line, that'd be fantastic. If not, no worries. Over to Dylan. Mm -hmm. Let's go on you. And... 
Oh man. Working. Looks like it is. And I'm yep. not. Okay. Sweet. Well, hello again. Uh Dylan from Drops. Uh uh as I said, we designed a plant management app and it all started with the premise of in a uh city, uh we usually have uh, specifically, I'll just I'll just focus on a specific example. In Saskatoon, we have a uh, a city uh, facility that employs roughly thirty professionals day in day out. The operation staff works twenty four seven. Uh, there's lab technicians and um, um, lab technicians and uh, engineers and maintenance foremen and all of those fun things uh, and. Uh, town about 100 kilometers away to the north of us, there is one fella who I've actually been talking with this morning. Uh, his name's Kelly, and he operates uh, the water treatment plant in the village of Lees, along with all of the other jobs that uh, uh, a town usually deals with. So he's kind of in an impossible position. He's got a fairly complex system. Uh, he has never worked with RO treatment uh, prior to joining the the uh, um, town itself, uh, or joining on as the town foreman. Um, and he's just been working with me actually to to get onboarded very quickly. Um, the uh, and uh, the the biggest problem is that if he uh, if he if he fails to operate his plant um, correctly, it actually puts his whole town into a situation where there's no water. That includes the schools, all the businesses, and everyone's house at the same time. So you can't just escape to a different part of the city and still have water. Uh, you basically do not have water, period, if their system goes down uh, in their town. Um, so this is not an uncommon uh, situation. There's uh, 2,400 communities just like the village of Leask across Canada. And um, I started this company about three years ago and started working just on the service side of things. Like, as I said, I worked directly with Kelly and just trying to figure out how to solve the problem. But it's very, very apparent that I cannot solve the solution myself. And we needed a way to scale it to these 2,400 communities. So that's where we brought drops in. This team got together. We've got engineering, we've got scientists, we've got developers, we've got operations experts. Um, and uh, and we started working on on this software to try and actually solve the problem at this at this scale or at, at scale. Uh, and so, what is it? As I mentioned, it's a collaborative data uh, platform where everyone using the app sees the same data, can enter the same data, can understand it uh, as as easily as possible. We focused on supply tracking, procurement, asset management maintenance uh, systems and an entire action center that basically becomes their digital plant journal. Uh, and recently what we figured out is um, um, the, the thing that will kind of unlock our scalability is conforming to the regulatory reports. And so we started generating those reports right inside the app. So all that data that's being entered can be turned into the into the standardized reports that these regulatory bodies are used to using. And as I said earlier, we figured out a way to actually make it free to use. Uh, so data entry on every screen that an operator might hand have at his at his uh, at his fingertips. Um, not all the plants have laptops or computer systems in them. So we designed it as a progressive web app to work on tablets. Uh, phones and computers, it all looks the same, doesn't matter which one you're entering it on. All the data goes into our cloud platform. We're using a MongoDB cloud plat platform, Blech. sorry. And uh, and then we spit it back to them with helpful, helpful guidance and reporting and all of the things that are required for them to know that their system is doing good or where it needs attention. And, and on top of that, we layered on the actual store to find all of the things that they might need. It's, uh, it's, not very, it's not very common for me to walk into a water treatment system and for the operator, or to walk into a community with a water treatment system and for the operator to know what the reverse osmosis membrane is inside of his plant or how many there are, but with a few questions 
we can figure that out and actually link them up with a supplier that can fix or sorry that can provide them replacement parts at the uh, with about it's about three clicks for them to get the parts that they need uh, into their on the way to their plant. So as I said, we're we are a the best way to describe what we're doing is a brokerage, uh, uh, a brokerage for service and supplies, and it allows us to accelerate our user adoption. We're generating we're generating lots of wicked data <laughs> to be utilized to essentially optimize all of the all of the rural communities that don't really have that access to the people that would point them in the right direction. Um, yeah, and the best part is it's required supplies. It's supplies that they have to buy to keep the system running. So they're always going to be purchasing them. And if we can keep their attention in the app and give them helpful tools, then the purchases always flow through the app. And we just keep expanding our offering by identifying the things in their plant. It's, it's working quite well. Um, since 2022, uh, 2021 is when I started the service side of this. 2022 is when we launched the app. We're working with 40 communities and we have hit a $500,000 a year purchase, uh, recurring purchases in the plant. And we're on target to actually hit them, hit our first mill, uh, hit our first million dollar year coming up here. Um, we decided to attack Canada first because that's where we're grown. That's where we have the, the massive amount of kilometers to catch in between all of these communities. It's, it's a very significant market all by itself. And, uh, it copy pastes down into our Southern, Southern, um, uh, friend down there, uh, pretty easily. Once we have it solved here at a harder, it's essentially harder to solve in Canada. And so if we attack the, the market here, it's pretty easy for us to hit $100 million in annual revenue flowing through the app. Um, yeah, so like I said, we started in Canada um, and it is it's uh, it is super important that we do these conservation um, uh, activities in, in Canada. And like I said, we started in Canada, um, but the bones of what we're building is uh, designed to scale to a global, global level as i mentioned we we would like to move into the usa next but like i said we designed it the bones of it to work at scale and we just keep solving the harder problems first and moving on to the next one uh it is a network so if you feel uh like you'd like to join the network that qr code on the uh or your left my right uh my left your right i don't i don't know like right from left it's unimportant uh, that's that QR code. And if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on the other side there. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Dylan. Uh, right and left is always confusing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> last, but, <laughs> last but certainly not least, uh, Summer for AI. Please go ahead. Okay. So um, I think I'll, I'll, I... Currently, the the process of uh, inspecting, um, may, may, uh, ensuring the integrity of sewer lines include watching hours of videos that are as the one that you can see here. Uh, that is not definitely not the loveliest of the processes to identify defects within uh, sewer lines. Based on those those defects, uh, operators can rate them and uh, prioritize their inter intervention and select uh, the, the best treatment to address the issues with those uh, pipe segments. Uh, and of course, it's an iterative process where they need to continuously monitor the, uh, the conditions and, uh, um, and based on that, uh, uh, adjust their uh, inspection plans and intervention plans. So that is why we uh, resorted to use artificial intelligence to automate uh, a large proportion of the processes within this uh, entire uh, operational structure. So we have our AI to analyze the videos, um, then uh, our uh, customizable rules will assess the severity of these con the pipe conditions and recommend certain interventions along with 
optimizing the uh, best treatment that could be applied to those uh, pipes and to, uh, within the budget constraints, uh, crew availability, and uh, all other constraints that they have, a municipality could have. Um, and uh, additionally, our uh, software can automatically track the changes over time that happens to that, that, that could occur within sewer lines. Um, and based on that, can predict failures, uh, which allows municipalities to preemptively intervene to reduce disruption in services. So, uh, uh, Using sewer intel in general can uh, help municipality reach, uh, in a way, a sevenfold increase their accuracy while reducing the time required to spend on all of these operations uh, by about 90%. Um, meanwhile, reducing their cost up to 80%. So basically, uh, you get better results uh, at uh, lower cost and less time. Uh, we are currently uh, working with several municipalities uh, across uh, Canada and four provinces. Um, this is uh, a uh, list of, like, as part of the uh, ongoing projects and uh, projects at different phases of um, uh, of execution. Um, and uh, we are continuously looking to increase our collaboration. Um, we are currently, we grow beyond our uh, founding team, but our team has tens of years of experience in uh, leveraging artificial intelligence application to improve industrial operations. Um, we are currently looking to extend our uh, network of projects and uh, form introductions to um, decision makers in municipalities uh, and possible users. Uh, that is uh, all for me. So we invite you all to see the end of the, 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 the light at the end of the tunnel by using Sword and Tell. And uh, here's my uh, contact information. I would love to chat with anyone who's interested to chatting with me to uh, explain more about uh, Sword and Tell and uh, our uh, uh, projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Summer. And thank you to all that pitch today. Um, I will be sharing a pitch book with uh, the attendees as well as just our extended uh, network with Waternext and with Agronext. Uh, and hopefully you'll hear back from uh, a few of them uh, with regards to some additional questions to your presentations. But other than that, I wanted to say thank you again for joining us and thank you to Farm Credit Canada and to Xylem for sponsoring Agronext and Waternext fall cohort. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and uh, we'll uh, touch base very soon and also happy holidays.